What up, what up, Salvador Brave here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Genius Find YouTube channel. On the channel, we love to talk about crowdfunding, how you can bring a new idea into reality, how you can get funding for a project. I have a river of people when it comes to checking out their actual Indiegogo or Kickstarter campaign. And today, I want to get into some quick Indiegogo tips. So some of the things that you should know before going live with an Indiegogo campaign, some of the quick things you can do in order to raise more funds as well as make use of more of the functionality of the actual platform. That's what we are getting today, and it's coming up right after this. All right, so let's get into some of those quick Indiegogo tips. And just kind of to recap, my name again is Salvador Brigman. If you wanna check out more of my videos when it comes to crowdfunding, just go and go through the archives of this channel. Man, I started this channel really for people that are just like you. I wanted to put out quality education, information that's really gonna be valuable and useful to you going into a crowdfunding campaign, as well as trying to really launch something new into the world, which can be very exciting, can be very terrifying at the same time, right? And really trying to do this in a way that not only is beneficial for your backers and the community, but also levels up your career, levels up what your potential is when it comes to whether this is a side project or something you're trying to do full time, and really be able to have something that's new that's out there to build a brand from scratch almost instantly and have tons of people checking you out in in the process. So these tips are going to help you get there, get there faster, and make use of more of the functionality on Indiegogo. All right, brothers. So the first tip that I got for you when it comes to Indiegogo is to really make use of their images when it comes to perks. So on Indiegogo, you can actually use different images that are available on your particular items and your perks. And they've done studies, and particularly one of these psychological studies, when a creator or world someone will actually see a visual image, the brain just tends to work a lot better when it comes to wanting to buy a particular product. And this is obviously no mystery to advertisers that are out there, whether you're looking at advertisements on television or on social media or even billboard ads, images are really what sell a product at the end of the day. So make sure that you have the ability and really pick out a couple of high quality images of your products that you're going to include in particular perk images as people are going down and they're deciding on what to identify or what they're going to select. This is very subtle, but it will improve conversion rates on your page. And it's also a piece of functionality on Indiegogo that is not available on their competitor, which is Kickstarter. The next quick tip, which I have for you is to make use of Indiegogo's referral features. You can actually run a referral contest on Indiegogo. Now I'm not talking about a raffle contest or something like that, because that obviously gets into way when it comes to the rules of doing it Indiegogo campaign. But what I'm talking about is a referral contest where you can actually see which people are actually referring funding to your particular campaign or referring more backers to your campaign. You can see those different sources in the Indiegogo dashboard. So if you want to, you could run a referral contest of sorts on a way to thank different people that are sending other backers your way. If you wanted to, you could set up a referral system using the Indiegogo dashboard and using the functionality that is available to you there. The third tip is to consider using a secret perk on Indiegogo. So again, this is not available on many other crowdfunding websites that are out there when it comes to doing a rewards-based crowdfunding campaign. However, with Indiegogo, you can actually make available a secret perk. Now that's a perk that only by going through this very specific link can people get access to. Can it actually appear on the page for them? So this is a great way to incentivize, for example, early backers when they're coming to the campaign. If they go through a secret perk, they're basically getting access to an exclusive perk or a deal or reward that other people are not getting access to. It's also a great way if you want to incentivize other people, for example, influencers to give a great deal to their following or something like that. You can have a particular secret perk and really easily then also track links in terms of the number of people that have been sent and have purchased that particular perk. So there are very easy ways to do this. Um, I think that this is great within the actual Indiegogo dashboard. You can always learn more about that. I have some great tutorial videos out there as well when it comes to the Indiegogo dashboard. Tip number four is to include multiple bits of multimedia on the actual Indiegogo video. So on the Indiegogo video section, you can go there and you can check this out on the actual campaign platform. You could actually upload multiple bits of multimedia. So for example, different photos, different videos. You can have kind of almost like a bunch of different stuff that if people want to, they could click through in order to learn more about your particular product or what you're actually doing out there, what you're getting out there when it comes to your product. So this is not available, again, on many other websites that are out there when it comes to doing a crowdfunding campaign. So why not make use of it? Why not use this thing, right? Do so you get more people excited about this? So more people can actually see what you're doing so you can influence the masses in order to actually join your tribe, to back your campaign, right? To become a part of your community. Make sure you're uploading multiple bits of multimedia because people think differently, man. Different people make different decisions. For myself, for example, I make decisions very quickly, right? I'm more like an emotional guy really where I see something, I want it and I just go on after it, right? Other people need to make logical decisions. They need to think about things much more, right? There are different types of buyers out there, so make sure you have multi multimedia on your campaign. 
so you can cater to them. Tip number five, and again, this is something that really not everyone has necessarily access to be able to do. We have many different types of creative entrepreneurs, uh, physical product entrepreneurs in the audience, people that are doing gadgets, that are doing gizmos, that are doing comic books, right? So everyone's kind of goals are a little bit different. And if you really want something where I'm sort of tailoring my advice to you more, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one individual coaching call with me. These are intensive coaching calls where I really try to bring my A game, bring that war chest of information, almost a library of knowledge I have up here from doing this for so long and really bring all those different examples when it comes to campaigns, when it comes to things that work, when it comes to different categories and present this to you on a silver platter as well give you feedback when it comes to what your plan is when it comes to attack of launching a campaign, your marketing materials, all those different things. You can book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call down below, but this is actually something that I really want to talk about. So this is the fact that on Indiegogo, if you want to, you could set aside a marketing budget for your campaign. So this could be, for example, an advertising budget, and you could work with someone who is sophisticated in order to help you allocate that, but you could run ads while you're actually going through the actual Indiegogo campaign. You know, not everyone chooses to do this, and the reason why I have my podcast, Crowdfunding Demystified as well, is to document that there are so many different campaign examples out there of people who are being successful without even using ads, right? And just organically blowing up on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. So you can actually listen to these real world success stories. But if you want to, if you wanna make it more of a sure thing, you could set aside an ad budget and you could run this on Indiegogo. And you can actually have your pixel as well be installed in terms of Facebook on Indiegogo, which is very easy to do. There are a lot of ways you can also install Google Analytics, those different things to have more insights into your traffic. The name of the game when it comes to marketing, aside from creative and intuition and really understanding what gets people to buy or back a campaign, is also data. Understanding the data, having the ability to look at and dial into the data to make more informed decisions. So if you want to, you can take advantage of that when it comes to the next quick tip when it comes to Indiegogo. My next tip, and this is actually something that I don't think is discussed enough in the crowdfunding industry, is that you can launch under many different types of stages of a project. So if you just have an idea, you could technically launch an Indiegogo campaign for that, where it's just a concept. You can also launch when you're in the manufacturing stages, right? And you have a prototype. You're gonna to try to raise money so you get more into broad scale manufacturing. You can also raise money if you already are shipping the product, if you want to. There are different stages which are available when it comes to doing an Indiegogo campaign. So if you want to, you could take advantage of this and you could even use this in order to move the product through these different stages until you get to the final stage, which is that you're regularly shipping this product out. And then at that point in time, you are eligible for Indiegogo in demand where you can actually join this, you continue to raise funds after doing a successful Indigo campaign. So my next step for you is to consider the stage of project which you're in and also what are the requirements on the Indigo platform when it comes to launching under that particular stage of project. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from FulfillRight today. Link in the description. My next quick tip for you is to really build a tribe beforehand. And I know this is kind of counterintuitive because a lot of times we think about Indiegogo and actually going there for the tribe, which is massive on that platform, right? It's a global crowdfunding website with tons of backers. But at the same time, it's really like any other marketplace out there, whether that's YouTube or whether that's Amazon or whether it's any kind of marketplace, even social media marketplaces out there. The more that you have a tribe of people already that are taking action, it's called social proof in marketing, the more that you're going to start to trend better on that particular platform. It's kind of like the little bit of the kindling that's needed. You know, you're kind of putting on a little bit of the kindling, you're putting a little bit of like the paper mache or whatever that's newspaper or whatever you're using to kind of get this fire going and you kind of light a little bit of ember starting to go and eventually you got this roaring bonfire, right? And your partner put on logs and the thing is raging, right? And it's insane and it's crazy, it's this massive movement, but it all starts with that initial kindling, right? So you wanna make sure that you have that kindling when it comes to going live on Indiegogo and that really comes from building your tribe ahead of time. So that's the next quick tip which I wanna include in this particular video. If you have not yet done that, that's something you should definitely think about doing so that way when you actually do go live, you will have a ton of funding, you'll have the kindling needed to build a roaring bonfire. My next step actually has to do with GoGo Factor, which is actually Indiegogo's algorithm. Now, this is technically a proprietary algorithm. However, there are certain things that I talk about in my book 
the Kickstarter launch formula, as well as I talk about in my other videos that go a little bit more in depth into this algorithm based on other conversations that I've had, based on my own witnessing this and documenting this. And actually one big thing when it comes to the Indiegogo Factor algorithm is the velocity of pledges. So velocity of pledges is basically how quickly your funding is coming in will dictate a lot of how you rank within the overall Indiegogo ecosystem. So what does that mean? That means that, for example, let's just say that you have a $10,000 campaign goal. And let's just say that it takes you 30 days to raise that particular goal. Over time, if you're just getting a little bit of funding, a little bit of funding, a little bit of funding, that's great. And then you end up hitting your goal. However, campaign A, we'll just call that campaign A, is not gonna trend nearly as well as campaign B in this algorithm. Campaign B, let's just say, hits that goal very quickly. You literally hit it within the first day or within a couple of hours. You're seeing tons of funding that's rushing in very quickly. You're gonna start to actually shoot up in the charts when it comes to the Indiegogo platform. So there actually is more to the Gogo Factor algorithm. However, from a very broad level perspective, that's kind of a little bit of how it works. So you really want to be aware of how you can kind of game this to your uh, advantage, game the system a tiny bit. So that way you can actually trend better on Indiegogo. You can get regular backers starting to support your campaign. You can engage strangers on the platform. It just makes a lot of sense to me. So that's my next tip is be aware of that, how to trigger the algorithm. And that kind of goes beyond the scope of today's video. My next tip is to really think about this as being a big big event. And what do I mean by event? So you're kind of almost doing a product launch in many ways when you're doing an Indiegogo campaign. So not only are you getting a river of traffic and funding, not only getting people to check this out, right? But there are also ways in which you can turn this into a media event. I have a great free course out there when it comes to PR. You can look that up on your own time. But when it comes to this, you can really turn this thing into a media event. You can get tons of people checking this out. You can get reporters writing about you. You can get people giving you testimonials and feedback. I've even had campaigns and students who have gotten YouTubers to make videos about them. There are a lot of easy ways in which you can actually turn this not only into about raising funds, not only into getting feedback on your product, we're getting people to check this out, but also into a media sensation where other people are talking about you. We're getting on blogs, we're getting on newspapers, that kind of stuff. Why not incorporate that into your campaign? So it really can not only have the power of the crowd, but also having this be a sensation where other people are checking you out from many different sources around the web. That is my next tip when it comes to running an Indiegogo campaign. My final tip, and there's actually so many that I was thinking about to cram into this video, but I don't want it to be too long. I was trying to make it very quick and kind of actionable in that way. My final one is to really change your thinking a little bit about the Indiegogo campaign, because hear me out, if this goes well, so let's just say that you do everything we talk about, right? When it comes to this in my videos, in my free course, in my uh, book, etc., you do everything right. You do it by the book. This can actually turn into a much bigger campaign than you thought. So for example, you could start off maybe doing the Indiegogo, but then you could also go into Indiegogo in demand. That could technically extend your campaign much longer when you're doing the in-demand. So not just another 30 days, you can even keep that thing open longer if you want it, and you can continue to collect orders. You can continue to almost use this as like an online store, and then maybe setting up your own online store using something like Shopify or using Wix or using one of the other tools that are out there, uh, WooCommerce or WordPress, and you can then transition to your store that way. So I would really think about this as actually a much longer runway than I think that most campaign creators are, which is that if this goes successfully, why not keep the thing going and building on that particular momentum. And in that way, you can really have the biggest ROI for the time that you're already spending trying to get this product out there into the world, trying to get other people to check this out, getting other people to take action, to back it, to own it, to give you feedback, those different things. Why not make this a really, really big campaign? And the way you do that is by not just having one campaign, but by also by extending the horizon and the view and by thinking big. It really costs nothing to dream big. So why not have a big vision, a big plan, and really think about almost levels or stages of success and how the things can change what you can do can change. And also when it comes to campaign, how that can evolve over time. So if you want to talk more about that, you can book a one-on-one -on -one individual coaching call with me down below. There are super intensive calls where we go really through the incomplete plan, the complete blueprint for your particular project, your particular category, what you're trying to do. Uh, many different types of creators and founders in the audience are really trying to tailor this to you and take all that information and knowledge and make it useful for you in one quick, actionable call, which you can get scheduled ASAP at the link down below and provide a little bit of information there so you can learn more about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, etc. cetera. Uh, I can give you some of my thoughts and feedback as well on your different materials. Occasionally, I will work one-on-one -on -one with students as well, or sometimes we'll do longer coaching as well if it makes sense when it comes to that particular creator. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. You can check out the links, like I said, down below, but go and check out some of the other videos, dude. Go and check out my podcast. I've got tons of real-world success stories of people that every single week are raising money. I'm trying to prove to you, I'm really trying to show you that this is possible. 
not only are other people already doing this, but if you're not doing this, you're almost like missing out, right? Other people are raising money on Indiegogo, other people are raising money on Kickstarter, other people are even doing what's now new, which is regulation crowdfunding and raising securities, you know, being able to raise investment capital for their project. This is happening. And it's my mission to document this for you, to share with you how you do it, and most importantly, to demystify the process for you. So if you think that I'm doing my job, give me a thumbs up on this video. Come subscribe to this content for more, uh, this channel for more content just like this. My name is Sal, and I will see you next time.